This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. On November 1st, 1992, in Austin, Texas, Hazel Muravian decided to take in a movie with her friend, 77-year-old Beatrice Bowles. I got acquainted with Beatrice when I moved into the apartment that I live in. And she's the first friend that I made there. And uh, she's still my best friend right there. Maybe I shouldn't say that because I got other friends. <laughs> It was a nice day, and we just wanted to get out, and we wanted to see this picture. The river runs through it. Have this on. I'm going back to the best. We were watching the movie, and B reached over and says, I don't feel too good. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Good. Now throw it away. For a thousand years, it's not the place in any room, but it changed that position. Are you all right? I'm fine. Okay. I kind of took hold of her hand, and her hand was very, very cold. Had you rather go home? No, I'll be all right in just a few minutes. Just in a few minutes. Fast. The good thing you received from me. I think we better go home. B. Oh my goodness. Lisa Geibel and her two children were seated next to Beatrice. My daughter tugged on my sleeve and said, "Mommy, is that lady snoring? She's breathing funny." B. I knew when I saw her that I needed to do something right away. B. My father had a pacemaker put in a year ago and I was there when he had those attacks and scared me to death and I the similarity was striking to me. Call 911. Yes, this is uh, over at the Arbor 7. Yes, sir. And there is a uh, elderly female, slightly overweight. And what do you mean by elderly? Is she 40, uh, I don't know. The movie theater's been dark, but she's probably in her 60s plus. Is she breathing right now? I do not know. Can you go check for me? I will there someone to do that, that can... and get the information right back to you. Okay. Is anybody a doctor? Is anybody a doctor? Is there a doctor here? I'm a nurse. Can I help? Finally, this man stood up and said, I'm a nurse. Can I help you? And I said, yes. My emotional state was just panic. Ma'am? Don Ritchie, a licensed vocational nurse, assessed Beatrice. The sound she was making was just a, a, a gurgle. There was no viable respirations. I knew she was in cardiac arrest. From the back of the theater, medical student Quincy Ford noticed the commotion. CPR. You do mouth to mouth, I'll do compressions. Y'all need some help? Uh, just a I said, hey, I, I know CPR. And I had no idea who he was. We both just had this main goal, and that was to help this older woman. 1,000, We'll switch on five. One, one thousand. I became tired. I started getting real dizzy in the head, and I let the man know that I didn't want to pass out on him. No problem. Continue CPR. It's one thing to breathe into that CPR dummy that everyone works on, but to breathe into an actual person, it's really hard. Dr. Mark Gordon also happened to be in the theater. Even in, in the best of situations, only a certain percentage of people survive a situation like that. So at that time, I didn't think that her chances might be good. Okay, let's check for a pulse again. The ones that was working on her were working so long and so hard that uh, 
she was quiet and no more noise from her or anything and that gave me the impression that she was already gone. It scared me. Within five minutes of the call, shift commander paramedic Bobby Gutierrez arrived on the scene. How long has she been down? Let me get around you. I found the heart rhythm to be in ventricular fibrillation, which is a lethal arrhythmia. The heart is quivering, so she's clinically dead. Still be fib. Clear. Still be fib. He defibrillated her once. And then there was still no response. I continued One, breathing for two, her. And three and four and Charging five. Charging again. With every minute that goes by, the chances of survival are decreasing. Every second that ticks by, the chances are worse and worse. Check for a pulse. Clear. I started crying when they were working on her on the floor because I thought she was dead or would be. I didn't think she would live through it. 360. Okay. We defibrillated her three times and she didn't show much of a response and that's bad. No pulse. Okay, Let's continue to, CPR. Let's go to 360. I kept praying over and over again, please, God, save this lady, you know, help her, you know, just, just help her. Let's continue doing CPR. All that was going through my mind is it'll be a miracle, you know, if this lady is okay, because from looking at her, I couldn't tell she was still alive. By the time additional advanced life support units arrived, Beatrice had been without a pulse for nearly 15 minutes. Continue CPR, continue CPR. I didn't want to leave. I want to see her eyes. I want to see her open her eyes. Can you stand by and check her pulse here? There were so many firemen, paramedics there. It was just mind boggling. It, just, it was kind of like a mini film going through my mind. When EMS was ready to intubate the woman, I got up and when I got up, I saw her face and Right then, I was completely sure that it was a wasted effort that this woman had was not going to respond. I got something out of here, bud. Okay. Great. Great. What do we have? The monitor? Sinus ribbon on the monitor. Okay. The... It's okay. faint, but it's there. Right. They didn't seem to be getting any results. And then I heard someone say that they had got a beat. We've got the line going. Okay. It was amazing because uh, the paramedic, he said, can you open your eyes? And I was really shocked. And she opened her eyes, and my heart just fell to the bottom of my chest. And I said, oh, God, I wanted to kiss her. Beatrice Bowles, a 77-year-old grandmother of two, was hospitalized for three weeks, but recovered from her heart attack without any serious after effects. I had a checkup the first of the month, and the doctor said I was doing great. And I said, if I'm doing so great, let me have my car back. <laughs> I'm still fussing about that, but uh, I'm doing great, though. I, re I feel good. I walk every day. I'm on a diet. Everyone comes and says, B, if it ever happens to me, I hope I'm as lucky as you were. The luck of the Irish. Why not? <laughs> hey, put a Recently, Beatrice got a chance to meet the people who work together to help save her life. <laughs> They asked me if I'd like to meet her, and I said, oh, yes, of course, I'd love to meet her. And I looked at her, and I said, this is really corny. <laughs> I said, hi, I'm Quincy. And she had, like, this color in her eye, and I said, she's alive. And I said, thank you, God. Truthfully, it wasn't until I met her that I, I realized the gift that was given to me in this. I lost my own grandmother this year, and uh, last night I realized I was given the opportunity to help someone else's grandmother or give back their grandmother to them, and that meant a great deal to me. Thank you. Yeah. Well, my name is Bobby Gutierrez. I was the first paramedic well, on the scene. Well, good to know you, Bobby. I'm the one to try to jumpstart your heart. Yes, you did. She just fought the odds. All the odds were against her, and she fought them and beat them, and it's just remarkable. It's, it's, it doesn't happen very often. It was good to see a, a positive ending for change. Are you Dr. Barnes? Yes, I am. Well, I'm so good glad to, to see, see you. you. Really to see you. It's all like a story you would sit down and write. <laughs> Why would people, perfect strangers, 
stop and do something like that for you because they're great people. They're wonderful. They saved my life. I've been playing a harp somewhere <laughs> right now. I'm doing all right. I'm doing fine.